you, ma'am. That's what Paul said. Paul said, I labor that Christ be formed in you. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting today. We're going to, you know, we, 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 it's going to be kind of interesting where we go today. Um, I want your input because I'm, we're going to go, we're going to go to a place that God, um, I thought it was interesting that God wants to talk about this today. How many of you need to know, and you, you heard me say this before, and I'm sure on, on Zoom, and on, you heard me say this before, it's important to know what God is doing. Amen? I think it's extremely important to know what God is doing. Um, we know, come on, we, when you, when you, if you go on the news, you know what the Democratic Party is doing, you know what the Republican Party is doing, you, you know what people are doing. It's all on YouTube. It's, we, we live in a social media time where you know what people are doing. People, you know what they're doing, you know what they feel like. But the question is, in the day of Noah, when the, in the days that God began to move in a way that really, um, I'm going to say, messed some people up, it's because people did not know what God was doing. And, I'm a, and I want us to understand that because it's extremely important. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to go into what God wants us to understand. Because today, I want you all to understand, today it is important to know Again, I'm gonna say what God is doing. We say what we've been studying, what God said, right? We've been studying what God said. A lot of people are saying God said this. We live in a time where everybody said God said this. God said this. People are very confused today. I'm gonna tell you, if you go on YouTube, all you have to do is go on YouTube, go on Facebook, go on Twitter. People are very confused about what they believe God is saying and what God is saying. Matter of fact, most people are attaching God to their own feelings and emotions. And they're saying, well, God feel like this, and God ought to be like this, and God ought to be like that. That's kind of funny because the fact is we didn't create God. God created us. Amen? So it's interesting. To, 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 so to really know what God feels, you got to kind of submit to the one who created you. But I want to go here. I'm going to go. I'm going to read the part where um, I'm, I'm going to go to Genesis, then I'm going to go to Peter, then I'm going to go where we're going today because I want you to see the whole picture. Um, and Genesis, it says, Genesis 6, it says, I'm going to read, I'm gonna read the, the fourth verse. It says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men, which were old men of renown. What does that mean? They, they, and I want you all to understand something. You will hear people say to you that when they, say, when they read that scripture, they will say the sons of God are angels that came into men. That is a lie. That is absolutely the untruth. There was no angels sleeping with no women and sleeping with no men. Angels are angelic beings. And number one, the Bible says, and, and, and you, I'm going to tell you, you will hear some profound men and women of God who will tell you that scripture, that's angels. But it cannot be angels because if you, read, if you listen to one part, it says this. Watch what he says when he says, there was giants in the earth in those days. It's colon, it's a colon, period, keep going. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, the only angels, demonic angels, demons are not called the sons of God. They would not be called the sons of God. God would not be calling a demon his son. Amen. He would not be calling something wicked. That don't even make sense. That don't even make sense. He wouldn't be calling something wicked his sons. But they came into doors now, and they became men of not renowned power. They became men of power. What I want you to understand is you have the Cain generation, you have the Seth generation. Everybody say Cain. And if you read Cain generation, how many know that Cain walked from the presence of God? Y'all, y'all know, right? Cain rejected God because when God, just like some of us do today, Cain rejected God because when Cain wanted to do what he wanted to do, and there was a consequences to Cain's actions. He rejected God's consequences and said, God, forget you. I'm going to do this on my own. In other words, I'm not coming to your presence. I'm not. Even though Cain knew God, he would, not, he would not acknowledge God. He, wanted, he, he, he just stepped aside. And if you notice, Cain was the first generation that actually, where there was a man married more than one woman. Go read it for yourself. Cain was the first generation where there was uh, men marrying two or three women. Cain was the first generation where murder continued on. Cain generation was a gen a godless generation is a generation that will continue to operate and move and function without God. Because remember now, but to, for you to understand the full effect of that, you have to understand who God is. How many of us know that God is love, right? God is love. Now, now what's funny about it, I didn't say God love. 
I say it's God is love. Understand the perspective is different. If you think God, if you think God loves, you're like, well, God loves. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says God is love. So when you begin to understand that he is love, all of us that they walk around to my, man, you know, I feel uh, somewhat poets and writers. Well, nobody really understands the definition of love. Love is, you know, it's so, myst it's so mystery. It's a mystery and nobody, it's what you feel and it's that. But that's kind of interesting because the Bible says that God is love. So for me to really have a true definition of love, I must have a relationship with love. Because I can think I'm moving in love, but if it don't line up with God, then how could it be operating in love? Do not confuse lust with love. Many people are in lust. They are definitely not in love. They don't even understand the sacrifice of it. They don't, most people are in lust because why? The world's ideal of love is line up with everything I want, do everything I want, make me feel what I want, and then I'll be, I feel like I love you. <laughs> and as soon as you stop doing it, we say stuff like this. Well, I, you know, this is the kind of stuff we say in our, in our movies and our love story. Well, you know what? I, I think I fell out of love with you. That, that's the most stupid. If you ever think about that, that's the, how stupid is that? I fell out of love with you. So how did that happen? How did, because you do, watch this. You do know love is a choice, actually. It's actually a choice. It ain't something that, like people say, love. Another stupid thing we say, this is, oh, this is so stupid. Love at first sight. How are you going to love something you don't even know? So be honest about it. You don't love the person because you don't know them. You love what you see. You like what you see. That's actually a lot of times lust, infatuation. Because you, you ever like what you see with somebody and after you got to know them, be like, oh, I can't, this, per this person crazy. You know what I'm saying? This female is crazy. So I wanted us to understand that, that in the beginning, it was it were men of power, men of power. And what happened? And I, when I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it like this: I want you to have a clear understanding where God is going today. There was God people. Now it, it was funny. It was all it, all humanity came from God, amen. And it wasn't really based on black man, white man. It was all dirt. It was it only we did that. God loved variety. You know what I'm saying? God loved variety. He just come on, man. All you have to do is look at the world and know God loved variety. All fishes don't look the same. All dogs don't look the same. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that we can look at a bouquet of roses and there's yellow and there's um, orange and there's red and we're like, this is the most beautiful thing in the world and look at each other and can't see the same beauty. But God does. God had, there, is no such thing in God, there is no such thing in God's kingdom, the black church, white church, Spanish church, God don't see it that way. I'm sorry. Man does because man always trying to exalt himself but to do so he has to pull down somebody else. Unfortunately, that's called the fall of man. Now, I want, to, I want us to get this. So you got God on this side. You got Seth began to call on the name of the Lord. So there was a generation, and don't take my word for it, read the Bible. There was a generation of, and they were brothers. There's Seth who called on the presence of God, and then you had Cain who created, who, who, who did not want to obey God. So they were brothers, but what, 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 what separated them was not color. What separated them was not uh, education, money, what separated them with was what they really believed. What separate people today is what they really believe. Let me tell you, there's only two types of people on earth. In God's eyes, there's only two types of people on the earth. Actually, all the things that we have, all the things that we use to find hatred and jealousy and anger, bitter, God don't see none of it. There's only two types of people. With all the million, billion people on the earth, God says there's only two types. Either you are for him or you're against him. Either you have this spirit, Romans 8, 9 says, either you have my spirit or you don't. We are all his creations. We are not all his children. That's another lie. We all got, no, we're not. Uh, no, we're not. You have to have this spirit. God is spirit. To be a part of his creation, you have to have his spirit. That's just the truth. Read it for yourself. Romans 8, 9 says, if you have not my spirit, you are none of mine. That's what the word of God says. Now watch this. I want to show you this, though. So when they came together, I'm, I'm giving an example. When they came together, it was, picture this, mama saved, daddy not saved. So a mama and daddy not saved, so watch this, mama, come on, she trying to go to church on Sunday, you know what I'm saying, or Saturday, the Sabbath, she's trying to go to church, she's in her Bible, right, she's praying, daddy want to watch the football game, he cursing, going, drinking to the, with a club, he boom, boom. So now they have children, right? And when they have these children, these children are com 
confused. Why? Because they see one parent serving God and the other parent serving themselves. Yeah? And there's usually a great commotion in the house. Why? Because the one that's serving God really wants the other one to come with them. And the one serving the other one don't really care about what the God they serve in. So what happened, I'm trying to get all understand it. So when they began to have children, these children grew up to be men of power. And when they began to grow up to be men of power, they began to implement and create laws because now they created all of them together and they began to create laws that drew people away from God. Let me show you. I'm going to show you. And God is talking about this then because act, it has actually happened now. We are in this today. I'm going to show you. After six, he said, watch what God said. After they, after they said, became mighty men, which were old, men of renown, men, men of power, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thoughts, of his heart, was only evil continuously. That's what God said. He said, let me tell you something. God is looking down on, 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 on America. He's looking at he's looking at America. He's looking at Russia. He's looking at Ukraine. He's looking at Jerusalem, Palestinian. He's looking at all this. And God is, is, is let me ask you a question. Do you think God would be very happy with the stuff he's seeing today? Now, honestly, let's, let's just ask, let's just be honest. Do we actually think God would be happy? Come on, man. We're in a nation that wipe out 100. We're in a nation, America itself, wipe out 1.2 babies a year. One million to it, we wipe them out in the bush clip. Do we actually believe God like this is really good? I love what y'all doing. I love what y'all doing. We in a nation, people, it's a, it, it, people hate each other. They just, it's, we, man, you look at somebody wrong, people murdering. Our movies, our TV shows are full of lust, murder, hatred. And in the church, we trip. We trip. We, 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 we sleeping with each other. We lying. So God, let me tell you something. God sees. I didn't say it. The Bible said, watch what the Bible said. It says, it says, and God saw. The Bible said, God saw. Come on. If you see, you know God. See. If he created you and you can see, what make you think God can't see? If you can hear, what make you think God? If you can hear, what make you think God cannot hear? And this is the part that's really funny. God won't speak to you. Why would you think God wouldn't speak to you? You speak. So what make you think God don't speak? Maybe you just don't position yourself to hear. Amen. So God saw it was wicked. Now watch this. So I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump down the verse. Um, I'm gonna jump, jump down the verse eleven. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and all the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted it his way upon the earth. And the next verse, we talked about it on Sunday, and God began to build. Everybody say build. God began to build. Because how I many you know, when God saw all this, when God saw that he couldn't, there was no, you couldn't tell the difference between, and I'm going to tell you, this is part what is really funny. This is part that really got God's attention. When you can't tell the difference between someone who say they with God and those who are not with him. When, remember that because all this started happening is when they began to mix. And when they began to mix, when the church began to mix with the world and the world mixed with the church, and you cannot tell the difference between them. Because Jesus said this. Watch what Jesus said. We found out John, John 17, when Jesus prayed, he said, I kept them in the what? Y'all come here, I got to tell me. He said, he kept them in what? The word. And then Jesus said, they did what? Receive the word, right? Now, when you read John 17, when Jesus prayed, he said, I kept them in the word. He said, they received the word. And then the Bible says they were sanctified by the word. Amen? So Jesus said, I spoke the word to them. Those I chose, they received that word. And the word they received sanctified them, set them apart from the world system. Let me tell you something. If you have truly received the spirit of God, there should be a sanctification in you. I mean, you should not look the same way the world would. You should not talk like her. You should not walk like her. You should not act like her. That don't mean you act like you stuck up. That don't mean you act like you better. Matter of fact, your love should be deeper. Your compassion
compassion, your kindness, your gentleness, your truth should be deeper. Because why? If you are, if, if the word of God is abiding in you, the seed in you is going to produce where it came from. Amen? Whatever seed in you is going to produce that harvest. So if the word of God is producing in you, when I look at you, I ought to see Jesus. And if I see Jesus, I ought to see God. That's the truth. But when, it, when you can't tell the difference, when you can no longer tell the difference, somebody's saying they're a Christian, but they'll curse you out just like that. When it seems like it's no difference, it's crazy. And no idea, you know why God gets crazy? Because if there's no difference, there's nobody to lead nobody out of darkness. In other words, if you're a liar, and I'm a liar, who's going to lead us to truth? If you're hoish, and I'm hoish, who's going to lead us to holiness? Come on. Two dishonest people can't get to honesty. It'll never happen. Two dishonest people will produce an atmosphere of dishonesty. Two people who are angry will produce an atmosphere of a household where anger lives. And two people who are the opposite will create households of fighting. Because if I'm going to be peace and you're going to be angry, you, we're going to be fighting. That's why the Bible says, how can two walk together lest they agree? I must come in agreements. We must come in agreements with the same seed. There's a, opposites attract. No, not in the kingdom. Not in God's kingdom. Now, wait, now, let me, let me help you out. That doesn't mean that you might be an outside person and I might be an inside person. That, and you like that because, you know, you can help me value some things on the inside. I'm, that's okay. But if you're an outside person, you still must walk in truth. And I'm walking... I still must walk in too. If you are in, in your hat, let me tell you something. Your ho hobbies might not be the best thing to create relationships off of. They really wouldn't. Why? Because a lot of times they, they fade out. They come, you know, you go to the gym every day and next week. <laughs> I don't know how it is, my brother. We, we go to the gym, right? And then after a while, I don't feel like going to the gym this, this month. Then I stopped going to the gym for a while, so that was my hobby. That ain't my hobby anymore. You know, I like to play ball. I play ball up. Me and you play ball all the time. After a while, my knees well, was like, boom. So I don't play that much no more. You know what I'm saying? My, I got to put on knee braces. I'm about to be out there trying to play with this young dude. I almost died out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so hobbies have no, huh? It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that makes we have that common. In other words, I believe in being faithful. So I thank God he gave me a wife that was faithful. Amen? And that's why we've been together going on 28 years, being faithful. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, w I didn't always believe in being faithful, though. When I wasn't saved, I was hoish. So I kind of hooked up with people who was hoish. That's why non relationships really didn't work. I wasn't committed to her. She wasn't committed. We committed to just having fun. Do y'all see the point? Okay. So... What you're joined to, I'm, take, I'm taking you somewhere. God is taking us somewhere. If you stay with me, God is taking you to a point because you, you have to be able to know what God is doing that you won't get yourself stuck in what's going on in society today because there's some stuff going on today that you don't want to get entangled in because it's not going in the direction that God is going in. Though, it even, though out of his mouth, it might even be saying God, but it's not going in that direction. All right? So I want to, did we get that? So... Uh, and Peter, he says that God is building a spiritual house. We are God's spiritual house. Let me say something. When God coming back, he ain't coming back for no big cathedral. They can build those big old cathedrals all they want to. Matter of fact, they can build them and, and they can put 10,000 people in it. God don't care nothing about that building. I promise you, he don't. There is no power in that building unless you go in. Right now, let me show y'all something. Y'all see, y'all sitting in this room, right? The power in this room is not in this building. It's in me. Because this room can't do nothing unless I turn it on. God wants you to understand in his church, you're the power. The people are the power. The building is just where we go have school. Amen? You are the power. The, the spirit of God. Now, in the Old Testament, in the, in the Torah, in the Jukka, it used to be in the temple. Jesus was in the, God was in the holies of holies. And I'm going to tell you something. If you walked up in there and you didn't come in the holy, you would drop dead in his presence. That's how holy God is. But the bottom line, it used to be, but when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said that the curtain ripped from the top to the bottom. And God stepped out of the curtain of the holy and began to step into the heart of men through Christ. He began to step into the heart of those who began to receive him through his son. And God will now step inside of you. Y'all get this. 
God will step. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm telling you something. If you, if you hear me, I'm going to show you in scripture why it's important. Why I'm telling you, God now wants to abide inside your vessel. The spirit of God wants to live inside of you. Just like he lived inside. People are like, how is God going to live inside of me? Wait a minute. Hold up. Come on. If you believe, if you believe the Old Testament, he, when, 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 um, when they built the, when they built the temple, right? He lived in, he, he stayed. Now, you know, how many of us know God is everywhere? He's sovereign. He's saying, there's no, God can be here in Africa and, and Japan. God, he is, unli he, ha he is unlimited. God is not restricted to time, matter, or space. We are. God is not. Because if he, if he is, he ain't God. If he's restricted to time, he ain't God. Meaning he got, no, he, he exists outside of time. He does not exist in t time, matter. He does not. God doesn't need a body. Amen. Space. He can't. He, he don't have he, he don't have to exist there one time, but he can put his. But God's presence can be wherever he wants. He will reveal his presence in this room. If you acknowledge it. God is what he you know, the many times we be like, God, let, let church be like, come on, let's do the choir. Let's usher the presence of God in. Uh, excuse me. You're already there. Why are you trying to usher something that's already? The problem is not, you, you, you can't usher God's presence. What you have to do? Like, how many of us ever walked in the house when you were younger and your mom was, might have been in the kitchen, your dad might have been outside, and you walked right past them and went in your room? Anybody ever happen to anybody? You know, you just walk past people. That, 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 that doesn't mean they weren't there. You just didn't acknowledge them. And many of us just don't acknowledge God. And, when, and it's funny Sometimes we have to go. You ever notice when you go through something, how quick you start acknowledging the God that's there? Boy, let your marriage start tripping. Let your finances start acting up. All of a sudden, you start acknowledging. They, oh, my God. My God. Let somebody begin to get sick in your family. You're like, Jesus. Now you know what? You, he, didn't be, he didn't become present when you thought he was always present. You just didn't acknowledge him. Because there's nowhere you can go. That he's not there. Amen. That's why he is God. But to us, he is, everybody say, Abba. <laughs> and he wants to step into the heart of who? Man, right? Probably. He wants to step into the vessels of men. We are the vessels of clay. God wants to step in. But you know what? He's a gentleman. He won't come in if you don't want a man. The Bible says he knocked at the door at your life. If you don't want a man, that's how you know love. Why? Love don't force anything. If love forced it, it wouldn't be love. If I made you, see, people are like, why God don't stop this? Why God don't do this? Because you don't acknowledge him. God is not going to kick your door down to make, God can't make you love him. If he made you love him, then it, wouldn't, then it really wouldn't be love. If a man made you love him, a woman made you love you won't love. You know, one of them songs, you're going to love me. No, you're not, I'm not, not going to love you. You know what I'm saying? You can't make somebody love you. They will choose to love you. Amen? And many people do not choose to love God. Even though God continuously chooses to love us. Amen? Now, why did, I, why did I say get that God is in the body? I'm about to take you somewhere and I want you to get this. We, God, God, wants us, God wants us to see something. Remember I told you I want you to see that there was the two people came together. There was those who believed God and did not believe God. They came together. They began to birth children. They became men of power. And these men of power, it became a society of wickedness because the men of power began to know it. They didn't believe in God, even though they may have had. And that's why the Bible says, do not, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, do not be unevenly yoked. If you are a Christian, God will not sanction you marry somebody who is not. You're not going to do it. Why? Because he said, God says, what does light have to do with darkness? And it's funny how many people that say they are Christians and don't even care what a condition of the person they get with. Well, he handsome. Oh, he got a job. Oh, she fine. The devil can be handsome and fine. She can be beautiful and be persuaded. By, by Satan himself and take your life through hell. Because why? The influencer in her life is Satan. Yes, yeah, she can move in a very wicked state and be very, come on, you think, you think, you think Delilah wasn't beautiful? She had to be beautiful. 
she had to be beautiful. This brother, come on, Samson put his head not one time. He laid his head three times in her lap. And she was telling him, I'm gonna, she was telling him, I'm gonna do you dirty. And he kept putting, so that I have to believe she was probably a pam, pam. Something about it made him like, I just don't care, kill me. You know what I'm saying? He kept coming, he kept going. He, he, so therefore, external beauty, money, education does not equate to godliness. That's a big lie. Just because somebody beautiful, just because somebody have money, just because somebody's a PhD, got a or a GED, or or this, that does not equate to meaning that they have God in them. No. The same thing we tell our daughters, make sure he got a job. That does not equate to meaning that a man of I mean, God. And then that same man, now your daughter at home crying. Why? Because he's cheating on her and slapping in her mouth. But he got a nice job. Does it make sense? Some of the people who are millionaires in this nation do not even believe. There are atheists who are millionaires being, and do not believe in God at all. And give money away every day. Give money away to, to, to charities. But they, don't give it, but they don't do it with a pure heart. They do it with a motive behind it. They have a motive behind it. In other words, pro I promise you, they're not doing it with a pure heart. They're doing it because they have a motive behind it. Well, I'm going to write this off. You know what I'm saying? So those are the things. Now, here we go. We're getting ready to get started. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move through this quick. Okay, Genesis. Turn your Bible to Genesis 127. We're going to go here. I want, I want to show you what God wants us. We're going to walk through this real quick. I want to show you in Scripture. 127 says what? Uh, Kenley, you're going to have to ride out with me. Genesis 127. Genesis 127. Mm -hmm. It says, so God created man in all his image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So in the image of God, God created who? God, listen, God created man in him. He created male and female. This is the beginning. Genesis means the beginning. God created male and female in him. Amen? This is God's doing. This was no accident. This was no Big Bang Theory where men and women, whatever. It was God. He created man. And actually, out of man, fellas, when we were coming at you about having babies, just let them know we had the first one. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. Because uh -huh. out of man, God pulled woman god did not go back in the ground to create woman he poured woman out of man that's when god see them as one amen in other words that's why think about it. that's why it's called uh man woman male female one out of the other in other words god poured it god created and women have to have their own relationship with god too because the bible says when god poured when god put he put adam to sleep and he pulled a rib and he created that means he did not adam did not create woman god did he pulled a rib up but god so a woman has to have some time with god amen okay let's let so god created he created male underline that you are male and female I heard myself. <laughs> he created male and female. He created he them. God established that. Okay, let's go to Genesis 2. We're going to read Genesis 2 to 23. Genesis 2, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. God said He took woman out of man, and she should. Be, and that's why, you know, it's funny that men. That's why if you ever notice, even today, you never heard of a woman rapper. I mean, a rapper. Uh, uh, every time we see something go wrong, there's always women following it. And it, I'm, I'm just being honest. When men out of their position, women get out of their position. The family become out of their position. That's why that, that's why Satan attacked men so hard. He come at men. That's why you look at the churches today. What do you see missing? Men. Why? Satan taking their head off. He taking men head off. Why? Because the fact is, if he could take off the head of the family, he can begin to destroy the family. Amen. And even though women can say, "Well, we're doing a great job. We doing they doing a great job." No, women doing a great job. But you can't be no man. 
A woman cannot be a man. She can't take the place of a man. Amen? God made them different. But they both have great qualities for the family. They need each other the way God designed it. They need each other. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep reading. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Mm -hmm. And they so, no, shall join to his girlfriend, his wife. No, join to his girlfriend, wife. He said join to his wife. He didn't say his girlfriend. He's God don't play house. He build families. He don't have to play house. He has the power to create wonderful relationships. Plan house don't do nothing but destroy people. That's why we got a lot of young girls and young men growing up by themselves by people wanting to play house. In other words, want the benefit of a marriage but without the responsibility or commitment of one. Y'all looking at me like, what? Yeah. No. God don't play house. And then he says, a man, y'all want to see marriage? Here is marriage right here. He says, a man is to leave his mother and father, right? And cleave, join to his wife. Amen? God created marriage. He created male and female. He created marriage in that male and female. That's how it was from the beginning. The evidence of it was a beginning because no life can come out of anything but that. Hear what I just said? If God created man and man, then there no life can come out of that. If he created woman and woman, no life. He had to create one who can receive and one who can give. to bring. One who can release a seed and one who can receive a seed to bring forth life. Amen? That is God's order of things. That's what God said. That's what God means. Amen? And I, I, this is not against it. I'm trying to show you something. God wants to show us something. Because why? You got to know the truth to know the lie. If you never know the truth, you can be embracing a lie, and God says, I never said that. And that's what's happening today. People are embracing a lie, calling something love, saying this is God, and God is saying, um, I'm sorry. Um, that's not my design. That's not the way I created that. Amen? And that, and God, let me tell you something. And when God is saying this, he's not saying this because he hates this person or because he hates that person. You know, God is not talking about because he's saying it because it ain't true. It's simply not true. And if it's not true, the opposite of something not being true is a, and a lie can never produce anything good. Y'all get it? Okay. So, so he says, let's go over again. He says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. We shall call, we, I'm sorry, she shall be called woman because she was taken out a man. Verse 24 says what? Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Mm -hmm. And they shall become one flesh. I want you to underline that, that, that word says, they shall become one flesh. Amen. They shall become a husband and wife can become one flesh. Am I right, Prof? This is God's design. A man and woman can become one flesh. I want you to underline that because we're going to come back to that. Um, verse 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. In the time that God created man and woman, when they were both naked, sin made things look nasty. God never, let me tell you something. Sex to God is not nasty. God created sex. It's not nasty. But when we use words like smash, and we use words like thought, and we use these disgusting words calling females bees and we it's funny how Satan will try to take something that God created as beautiful and turn it into something so perverted and disgusting. You know, it's perverted when you're sleeping with some three-year-old baby. It's perverted when you're sitting there watching children on porn. It's perverted when daddy or uncle walking in the room with somebody or girl. Or it's per when he takes 
when Satan takes something that God meant as pure and beautiful to produce life and he turned it into something just for pleasure. And then he turns it into for pleasure and, and he attaches to lust to where you never satisfy. So you're trying to run through this and you're trying to run through that. And, you, and with men, he's saying, how many can you knock off? How many can you smash? With women saying, well, I'm going to use this to get this. I'm going to use that. He, we turn it into something twisted and nasty and defiled, unclean and unholy. Where it's no, watch this, it's not even no longer about seeing the woman or the man. You're just a mere object of pleasure. And when I finish with the object, I move to the next one. But that's not how God created it. He created it between a husband and a wife and they become the one. And they cleave together, right? And they become one. And out of that one, this God mathematic, God math is crazy. The man and woman, one, two, become one and produce one. His mouth is crazy. He said, but to produce one, you got to become one. This is God's plan. Amen. And this is a beautiful plan God had. This was because they were watching. They were walking in the garden. Am I right? They were walk. The Bible said God is what? Love, right? And Adam and Eve is walking in the presence of love every day. And they in, in, in the garden, they had trees. And, and, this, and they, the Bible said they were naked, meaning they, they can look on each other and did not find fault. Today, we always find it fault. Something wrong with you on this. Why are you always, we always, we can't look on each other's neck and this means we're always hiding secrets from one another because you perceive that somebody might not really accept you. So you hide this or you take away this or you put this here. And that's why when couples first meet in the world, they put their best, we've been taught to put your best foot forward because you don't want nobody to know all that stuff about you. So you hide. And we, and we know we're in a time of hiding today. We're in a time of hiding. We got so much makeup on. We putting, we, we got all, we hiding. We just, we just cut. Matter of fact, today we hide so well. You saw her in the club and you went to her house and told her where she at. She was in the club. You was like, you were dancing. And she went home. And when you came to the house, she was standing right outside. You were like, where is, where is Kim? I'm Kim. No, you can't be Kim. You're not the woman I met. Why? Because all the things that we hide, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with makeup. I'm just saying people like that. And men, we hide behind our money and our cars. You know what I'm saying? We want to be, we want to be jewelry down. We want to, we want to act like we got the money. We driving the Mercedes. We driving all that. But we're not gonna tell you that we insecure and a, and a control freak and got a filthy mouth and don't have no self control. You find those things out later. But when God first created man and woman, they didn't have to hide. Everything was in the open. Everything was in the open. And when sin came in, that's when they started covering up. The Bible said, didn't it? They start covering themselves up. Because when, when sin come in, sin are lies. And all of, you don't want nobody to know this about you. You don't want nobody to know your past. You don't want nobody to know, your, oh, and believe me, some of us, you definitely don't want nobody to know those thoughts be running through your head. But when God created man and woman, and he created him and she, him and her, right? He created them and put them in the atmosphere of God, and they were naked. And the Bible said they were not ashamed. Could you imagine being with somebody and you're not ashamed? They know you and you know them. And they know, and watch this, and they know your secrets, and you know they still love you. You know they're there with you. They know you had an abortion, and they they like, but it's my babe. Amen? They know your past, but they have accepted your presence because of the God that you have accepted. Because can't nobody cast stones. Because everybody in this room, including me, oh, you got some stuff in that closet. You got some sin and some things that came about in, in, some things came in your life that you, you could be married with somebody five, 20 years and still ain't telling them that one thing. That you don't want nobody to know that Satan done told you that they'll reject you, they'll hate you, they, they won't look at you the same no more if you say this. So we got a lot of people that's broken, hiding. And, and Satan loves this because when you hide, <laughs> when you hide, you can't be free. When you, when you hide, you really can't be totally you. And some of us are hiding because of things people have done to us. Because some of us have been molested. Some of us have molested. Some of us, been, we lied from the beginning. We told a lie when we first met you. So now you got to remember the lie. 
Y'all feeling what God's saying? Y'all see the change from what, I've never seen what God actually created and we can see the change, right? Anybody seeing it? This, oh yeah, because we, we love a lot. We got TV shows about the lie now. Cheaters, LA Housewives. It's, it's popular, the lie, the, the cover up, it's popular. It's money to be made as the Kardashians. It's money to be made with the lie now. Amen? Because let me tell you something. When the lie don't longer have, when the lie no longer has to lie and can be still all in the open, that's just straight out wickedness. Because you like when you could just do wickedness and be in the open with it, that's real wicked. Okay, let's finish this up. Okay, we um so Adam, let me see, what where do we stop at? 25. Okay, go ahead and read it again. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay. Go to go to Genesis 4 1. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now Adam knew Eve, his everybody, wife. Everybody say Adam knew Eve. Eve. Y'all know what that word knew mean right there? Huh? That's, I, I like, I like, how many of us like the word, how they, what they use for sex, for that word? That word new. It's funny how they use the word new. Not no, new. When I always, when I read that, I'm like, that's kind of interesting. They might say he knew Eve. Well, keep reading. You'll see, you'll see how they're using that word new right there. Keep reading. And she conceived and bore king and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. There's a couple of things going on here. First of all, he knew her. Most of us, sometimes we have some people we don't even know. But he knew her. Amen? Oh, come on, we're going to be real. He knew her. We, we start saying, I know you after. You know, I ain't know you were like that. You know what I mean? We start saying, I ain't know you was like that. But you don't slept with him. You don't done all that. And now you're talking about, I ain't know she was like that. So now you don't lay with somebody you ain't even knew? But Adam knew Eve. Then in knowing her, he conceived, right? But I love the part. You know what part I love about when he said? She, the Bible said she received a man from the Lord. The child, the children are always a blessing from God. Say, receive. You see, you, how many of you I see? Male, female, knew. God says, I gave them life. She conceived a man child. He said, I gave them life. This is God's order. This is what God established. So if this is what God established, what make you think that the enemy would not attack this? Amen. What make you think if the enemy attacked? Because if God established this, then if we stay and we do it the way God wanted to do, it's going to be a blessing. Amen. Because first we're going to start getting to know someone, right? Then we're going to understand that when we get there, we're going to conceive and we're going to thank God for he's the one that gives life. And if we know that God is the one who gives life, we ain't going to be so quick to cancel life. Hmm. Amen? Because then she say, God, I received a man from the Lord. Even though they were together, she said, I received the man. She gave God the glory for the life of the man she received. Y'all with me? Okay, now I'm going to show you something. If we all see the picture God just painted, I want to show you something, then I'm going to take, I'm, I'm take you to the end. We're going to take you to the end. You ready? Turn off the, get, you go, I don't know if you can turn it off. Turn off the light, turn off the light. I'm going to tell you, you ready? I want everybody, I want you to pay a close attention to what we're about to see. From what God established. Mm -hmm. I believe that marriage. Uh, is the union between a man and a woman. Now, for me as a Christian, for me as a Christian, it's also a sacred union. Oh, uh, give me a second, sir. Stop right there. Turn the light on. We're going to break this. We're going to break this down. He started out the same way we started out. 
knowing God's way. Come on, did he not say that? He said, I believe that a marriage is between who? A man and a woman. Did he not say that? And not only say, I'm be, me being a Christian, I believe this is sacred. That ain't his opinion. And listen, if that's not his opinion, then what made him think he had the power? And I don't care who he is. Who did he think he was that he didn't have the power to change something that he didn't establish? He didn't establish that. We just read it. God established that. Y'all better, better see what's going on. Y'all better see what's going on. Remember I told you the key is, remember when I told you, when they come together, right, when the world and the church come together, right, and I say they begin to have children, when the church begin to compromise, they have children, they begin to create men of power. And when these men of power get in position, do they, do they, because they in a lukewarm house, because it's kind of, this house was lukewarm. Why? Because his mother was a Catholic and his father was a Muslim. Two different. His house was new. It wasn't about being black or white. Black man, come on. Who cares? Black and white is not a sin. Black and white is not the problem. All that is is black dirt, white dirt. Get together, they, they make beautiful babies. But if it's a black man or a white man, I mean, I'm punching no. over. If there's a black man <laughs> and a white woman, they will still be able to together and make some babies. Am I right or wrong? If there's a Spanish man and she's a white lady, they, that, we, we brought that foolishness up. It ain't nothing but humans. The bottom line, there's no difference other than the fact you may look different, but you're still a woman. And he's still a man. Y'all get what I'm saying? Don't let society fool you. Listen, this is not a similar. That being black is not a choice. It's a beautiful color. Being white. It's not, a, it's not something that you choose. It's, it's a color. But it's not. But it's all humanity. It's just God's variety. It's not the same as what's God. If I, if I connect, if right now, if I meet a Chinese woman, I promise you, if we connect it, then if we join together, we are able to produce babies. It's only the mindset of people that's wicked and evil that brings division and separation. God, let me say something. God don't think that way. That's why some people, you ain't gonna never get married. Why? Your husband, because the husband God have for you don't look like what you want. You too black to see the husband God have for you. You too white to see the husband God have for you. Because God don't, God don't stop. He's not color driven. He's not ethnicity driven. He don't, God will set up a, a Chinese woman, a Chinese man with a black woman. He don't care. And how he can do it is because love is colorblind. Love has no color to it. Forgiveness has no color to it. Mercy has no color to it. Kindness has no color to it. Gentleness has no color to it. It belongs to him. It belongs to the person that is painted inside. Amen? Just like hatred has no color to it. Unforgiveness has no color to it. It belongs to the heart that is planted inside. Amen. That's why Martin Luther King says something like this. Man shall not be judged by the color of his skin, but the contents of his character. What's inside of him? I don't know you wicked because you white until you open your mouth. I don't know, I don't know that you rude and nasty if, 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 if you're Indian or what until you open your mouth. Amen? I don't know it until you open your mouth. Then we get it. God, look. Man, God, look at this room. Look at this room. Let me do that. Stand up. Stand up. Show the stand, stand up. And I don't know if y'all thought about this. If he made everybody the same, it would be so boring. It would be, wouldn't it be so boring? Man, I ain't almost here walking the mall, bro. I done seen white women beautiful. You, I'm talking about the, the eyes like ocean. Man, I done seen some sister, so the, the darkness of her skin is so beautiful. Her, oh my God, her face is beautiful. I'm like, God, you be showing out. God, you be showing out. God, you show out. Amen. 
But only us when your heart is wicked and unforgiveness that you look and say, oh, you know what? You don't look like me, so ugh. Oh, you don't, you don't look ooh, look at you. In every race, let me say something. In every color, there has been wickedness in it. Black people have no monopoly on wickedness. Because why? There have been black people who are so absolutely wicked. There have been white people who are so absolutely wicked. There have been Spanish people who are so absolutely wicked. And just like there have been some powerful God of me, God of me and they were white. Men of God that were black. Men of God that were Spanish. There have been some powerful women of God who were Spanish and black. They... They were powerful, not by the outside. They were powerful from the seed that was on the inside. Amen? So, thank y'all. So, well, I see this. So, I wanted to know. Go, we're going to go back there. Okay. okay. I wanted to go back there because he started out correctly. I want y'all to understand, America started out. I mean, there was a time when America says one nation under God, indivisible. Some of us, people start out, I love God. And then something happened. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, got you. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay. So I. I want y'all to listen. Take your notes on this. Watch what I'm going to start it over. Barack Obama says that his feelings about gay marriages were evolving. Look at the word he used evolving. Evolution, evolving, on December 20th to 10th, during an interview. Go ahead. Start it over or keep no, going? Just keep going. Proof uh, whether gays and lesbians should be able to get married. Uh, I've spoken about this recently. As I've said, you know, my feelings about this are constantly uh, evolving. I, I think that the same evolution that I've gone through is an evolution that the country as a whole has gone through. I just concluded that... Um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. By virtue of the power and authority vested in me by the state of California, I now declare you spouses for life. This morning, the Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law. That all people should be treated equally, regardless of who they are or who they love. This decision will end the patchwork system we currently have. It will end the uncertainty hundreds of thousands of same-sex couples face from not knowing whether their marriage, legitimate in the eyes of one state, will remain if they decide to move or even visit another. This ruling will strengthen all of our communities by offering to all loving same-sex couples the dignity of marriage across this great land. We are in a battle for the soul of America. A battle that by the grace of God and the goodness and the gracious and greatness of this nation, we will win. What I mean by that is somebody that um, somebody just because somebody may be homosexual doesn't mean that they shouldn't be able to get a job. It doesn't mean that they should be treated with disrespect or physically abused or slandered. But see what the problem this is you have to see, you have to see, you have to see how subtle Satan moves. There was a subtlety in how he moved. See, they said the equality to marriage, first of all, man did not establish marriage. God did. 
And see, a nation can give you equality as a person, but does not have to back up your sexual preference for your sexual desires. Let me give you an example of a nation, that, what I mean by a nation do it. We're not going to turn around and say that we're going to give equality to pedophiles, that they should be able to have the right, the civil right to be able to sleep with little babies if they want to. We're not going to support that because we understand that that is morally incorrect. But a pedophile can run off of what they said and say, well, if they believe that that is morally correct, why can't I be, we, I love little children. Why can't I have the same stance that they have? I believe if a man say he love another man and I, he can be mad, why can't I say I love a little child? You see the door open? The door open. And they try to ride in off the civil right. And what's funny, what's funny is that there's a little truth to that. Because in civil rights, see, the problem is, even in the church, you should not be going spitting on somebody because they're homosexual. You should not be throwing rocks at them. You should not be talking, calling them all out their names and disrespecting them. You shouldn't. Because if you are, wait a minute, if I'm, you are a liar, you don't want nobody calling you out your name. You are thief. You, I mean, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. But because, but when a nation begins to embrace sin as a means of, of, of justice and righteousness, then that nation is now what? Challenging God himself. Because I didn't say it. I'm giving you what God gave me. It was God who said he created male and female. It was God who said a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife and they shall become as one flesh. No man or man, no man or man or woman can become as one flesh. But if you notice, this was about marriage. Marriage is about covenant. So what they did is they challenged God. And then the vice president, not only did she was so wicked, not only did she challenge God, she said, I'm going, she stepped out of her position because she didn't have to do that and said, I'm going to, I'm going to be a part of this, uh, of this covenant. I'm going to solidify this covenant. Now, what's funny, I'm going to tell you what God gave me about this. Look at her position and you can see the battle. Her position is that she is a prosecutor. Some of y'all going to get this in the spirit. A prosecutor. You all know what a prosecutor is, right? Not only is she a prosecutor, she a DNA. She is the top. She was the top prosecutor in California. A prosecutor is not one who sets you free. It is not one who looks to set you free. It is not one who ever have a desire. A prosecutor job is to bring you into bondage. It is to bring you into prison. It is to find you guilty. So God says, I want you. I want the world. I'm talking to the world. I want you to see what I'm saying to you because you want to be disobedient because you don't want me. So now I'm going to rise up a prosecutor. And not only is she a prosecutor, the platform that she runs off of is the platform of freedom. Mm. That's like a kind of, kind of that's like a what is a an oxymoron a little bit. You are a prosecutor, but you run off the platform of freedom. And what's you what I want you to start, this, I'm not here. I'm not a, here to represent a Democrat. I'm not here to represent no Republican. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about Barack Obama. I'm not talking about, I'm saying God is using these people to expose a nation. Because people only get into office by the support of a nation. Meaning the nation must support their ideology or they wouldn't get into office. Are we seeing what God is saying? God had me read the first part to show you what he's doing. Then he said, let me show you what, why are you living? Let me show you the warfare. Let me show you what's happening. Because see, you have men and women now who are in devout positions of power who do not, who take Christ out of their mouth and yet their heart is not committed to God. 
So they began to create laws. Now, if you will not, if you say, I do not accept what you're saying, I do not, I will not stand down on the word of God. Now there's a law that will come after you for being a woman, a man of God. That's called persecution. In the church, we just sleep in. We just sleep in. Trying to get likes on Facebook, trying to, you know, the church. I'm just talking about the church. We sleep in. We got gimmicks in the church instead of just preaching Christ Jesus. Let me show you how we got here. First Corinthians. I want you to go to First Corinthians. I want us to go to chapter six. When you get this, amen, chapter six, amen. first Corinthians. Amen. amen. Let's start out with let's start out with verse twelve. First Corinthians chapter six, verse twelve. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but if I will not be brought, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I'm not going to let anything bring me into bondage. Some all things are lawful to me, but I'm not going to let just anything bring me into bondage. Go ahead. Verse 13, mm -hmm. foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, the but body for is the not for what? Sexual immorality. The body is not for what? Sexual immorality. Remember, I told you they was naked without a shame. Remember, I told you that their bodies were naked without a shame. The body, God created the body. Out of man created, He said the body. I better say the body. Remember, I told you God dwells. He wants to dwell where? He wants to dwell in you, in your body. And he says the body is not for fornication. That what is fornication? Sex without being married. God says, I didn't create your body to be used as something just for pleasure. You have, you have, watch, God, watch what it said. You have, I have much more value for you than that. You're more than just something for pleasure. You're actually, I made you to understand what love is. Go ahead. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. The body is for who? The Lord. I need everybody to say the body is for who? The Lord. No, but, but you got people say, no, this is my body. But the word says the body is for the Lord. Lord. No, this is my body. I do what I want to do with it. How many of us sin the rebellion? How many of us sin the, I don't want no baby. It's my body. I make the decision. We all thought like that. Come on, let's be real. I did. It's my body. If I want to hit that, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to do what I want to do. But the Bible says the body is for the Lord. Y'all notice he didn't say for Christ. He didn't say for Jesus. He said for the Lord. Why Lord? Lord mean ruler. God is the one. Why? But you got to understand this. Why does God want you to understand he wants that position? Remember what I told God is what? God is, God is love. Love walked the body. Why? So he can show you what it was actually meant for instead of lust wanting the body and you going around using and mistreating it and doing it wrong and, and trashing it. So if God is love, he said, the body is for the Lord. Why? The Lord wants to show you how to treat something with great value. Because God sees you. Let me tell you something. You are not one in a million, baby girl. You're one to every human being that ever been born. There has never and there will ever, never, ever be another you. And even, even in our society, the rarer something is, the more valuable it is. And God says, it's so sad. I, God says, I spend so much time trying to teach my sons and daughters how valuable they are, but they let the world tell them that they're worth nothing. 
And we have daughters and sons walking around feeling insecure with no value and what, subjecting themselves to all type of foolishness. Why? Because they're just looking for somebody to love them. You know, the most famous saying in the world, looking for love in all the wrong places. If you're not looking for it in God, you're definitely looking for it in all the wrong places. Because the places you're looking for it in can't produce it because God is the one that produced love since he is love. Go ahead. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord mm -hmm. and the Lord for the body. And the Lord for the body. Go ahead. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us up by his power. God gonna raise, say by God gonna raise me up by his power. Amen. Say it, don't count me out. Don't count out people. God says he's gonna raise you up by that's the good news. He's gonna raise us up by his power. Go ahead. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Ooh, what? Say it again. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Mm. Your body is a member. When we, when we read first Peter, you are a spiritual stone to the spiritual house that God is building. When you accept God, your body now belongs to the kingdom of God. Your life now, you, you are a kingdom child. You don't even know who your daddy is. You don't even know who you, the problem is most of the world don't even know who they really belong to. They don't even know who you, you said, I belong to the black coalition. I belong to the white coalition. No, that's what I'm talking about. Talking about somebody asked me today, they, when it was my birthday, it was like, what, you a Leo? I said, no, I'm a son. It was like, huh? I said, I'm a son. I said, I'm no Leo. I'm not claiming no sign. I said, I know who I am. The Bible says he came among his own, but they received them not. But for those who received them, gave he power to make them sons. I'm a son. I'm not a Baptist or a Pentecostal. I'm not a Catholic or Jehovah Witness. I'm a son. Because why? None of that stuff in the Bible. There is no Catholic in the Bible. It ain't even wrote about. There is no Baptist in the Bible. There is no Pentecostal. So why are you calling yourself something God ain't even call you? That's man's religion to bring division. And that don't mean some of them in it are not saved. Some of them are saved, but they need to come to the realization that Jesus said, I came among my own, but they receive me not. Receive me, something is given. But for those who receive them, remember we say a seed. Those who receive the seed gave the seed power to make them sons and daughters. So if somebody asks you, what's your denomination? Say, I, no, I'm a child. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. That's relationship. Because most of us talk about relationship. We don't even know what it means. I got a relationship with God. What do it mean? We be like, God, God, God told me, actually, he said, ask him what it mean. They be like, well, I have a relationship with God. So what does that really mean? So we like to jump on the next thing. To find. And when somebody, everybody said, no, find out. Because the truth is, Jesus came for a relationship. It's in scripture. I can prove it to you. He said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way back to the, come on, y'all, no other way back to the, no other way back to the, he ain't said no other way to the Baptists. He ain't said no other way to the Catholics. He ain't said no other way to the Jehovah Witness. He said, there is no other way back to Abba. Amen. Your spirit, bear witness with his spirit, and it cries out, Abba, that's my daddy. That's why when his disciples came to him, he said, teach us how to pray. He said, you want to know how to pray? Pray like this, our father. I came to bring you back to Abba, and Abba back to you. And I'm going to give you a heart to want to please your father because your heart was turned from your father and you was pleasing yourself like a rebellious child. But your father loved you so much that he came to capture you from the darkness and bring you back to him and teach you how to please him. Because when you please your father, your life will surely be blessed. When you please God, your life, not, not maybe, not, your life will surely be blessed. The reason why our life look crazy, because we spent a whole lot of it trying to just please ourselves. Shooting in the dark. Shooting in the dark hoping for something to turn out right. God don't shoot in the dark. Why? He the one spoke light to the dark. He said, I got to see. That, 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 that. Then he said, he said, I, he said, I don't, he said when, he, when God said dark, he said, let that be light. I got to see. Amen? Go ahead. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Listen to what he's saying. Should I take the members of Christ and, and join them with a prostitute? What is God saying? He's saying it's something about who you connect yourself with. It's something about who you connect yourself. See, they talking, they was talking that trash. Obama, see, but they don't realize that God got a problem with what you connect yourself with. Because what you connect yourself with will begin to identify you. Amen? 
come on. If you rolling, if you, your homeboy is rolling dirty, and you start connecting yourself with it, they're going to think you dirty too. Amen? I was in law enforcement. When I was in law enforcement, if they pull over and you hanging with your boy and everybody in the car smoking, you're not going to convince them that you wasn't smoking too. Even though you might not have been. Why? Because what you, look what you joined yourself with. Oh, y'all got to get this. God is concerned about, because remember that in Genesis, the Cain generation joined themselves with the Seth generation and they began to produce something that was not godly. And they're talking about joining with something, coming covenant. Covenant means to join with something that God said, I never designed that. God says, I don't care if the Supreme Court signed off on it. I'm not signing off on it. Because my court is higher than the Supreme Court. Amen? I said, I'm not signing off on it. And this is not to walk out here and see a homosexual person get mad. But you better, but if you see the truth, you better start praying. God help them, set them free because they done joined themselves to something. That's, they have joined themselves to something, God, that has separated them from you. I don't care if he's preaching behind a pulpit. I don't care who she is. If they're practicing it, they have joined themselves to something that has separated them from God. Why? Because God never sanctioned that. It's in his word he never sanctioned it. Amen? Go ahead. Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? You get it? Now watch this. He, read, read that again. He what? He who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. Does anybody remember when I told you to underline something earlier? Say, so he that is joined to a, a harlot is a what? One body with her. So he said he, he's one body with her. Now, if you go back to Genesis, the second chapter, and go to the 24th verse, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's what God wanted you to become one with. When a man is to leave his mother and father, come unto his wife, he said they are to become in one flesh. But he says what? He said he who is joined to a harlot is one flesh. So he's telling us in scripture that you can join yourself to something that can pollute you. He's telling you in scripture that you can join yourself to something that God says a husband joined to his wife. They are one flesh. But the scripture is making it perfectly clear right here that you can join yourself to something and what you have joined yourself to. If God didn't say it, you have become that. He said he who has joined himself to a harlot is now one with a harlot. So if she a prostitute, you are a prostitute too. Amen. You don't believe it? Join yourself to somebody who have HIV and watch what you get up with. Join yourself to somebody who have herpes and watch what you get up with. What you join yourself with will become a part of you. That's what God is trying to get us to What you join yourself with will become a part of your nature, your character. So he's saying, are you, so let, if you do it my way, you're going to join yourself to a wife. That's covenant. And watch this. Oh, I got to get, where's the scripture? It's Isaiah, where it says he's married to the, um, where's wife? Isaiah 55, what is it? Where we, we say we're married to, um, no, not married to backstory. We, we call us his wife, where we're his wife. It's in Isaiah 55, is 11? Or 54? No, it's a scripture that says in Isaiah that, that like you hear a woman say she's married, God is her husband. And people are like, you wrong, you wrong. No, it's actually in the scripture. It's actually in the scripture that God calls himself. No. Be five. Read it on the mic so it can. We almost got her. <laughs> Isaiah 54, verse 5, it says, For your maker is your husband. Say it again. For your maker is your husband. Say it again. For your maker is your husband. So you become one. If your maker, how many, how many of us, he's our maker? I don't know about you, he's my maker. Amen. 
He said, even as me, I mean, like, wait, 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 hold on. Yes, because we are considered the bride. Christ is considered the groom. We are considered the bride. Why? God uses marriage so we can understand him. Because when a man, let me show you, when a man meets a woman, like when I met my wife, and when we get married, because she's so blessed and I'm so blessed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we became one. In other words, I'm got to be straight. To become one, I had, my wife has a womb. I have a penis. When we become one, I have to go inside of her. We become one. Everybody understand? And then when I'm inside her, God has given her eggs and has given me a seed. Amen. When I release the seed and that 23 chromosomes for the man, 23 chromosomes for the woman produces life. God says, this is what I designed for humanity. Amen. And he uses that because watch this. We're going we to see it. So God says, I want you to see that in the natural so you can understand what I'm doing in the spiritual. He says, the same way you come into her, the same way you meet a bride and you open up your heart to her and she open up her heart to you and you begin to fall in love and you begin to communicate and you spend time together and you come into covenant and then you become one and you produce life. He says, when you come to me, come on, y'all, y'all got to get it. When you come to me, and I knock on the door of your heart and I'm spirit in the spirit and you let me in and we become one because you loving on me and I'm loving on you and you loving on me and I'm loving on you and we become one he said I'm going to release my seed my word and my word going to get inside of you and it's going to start producing life through you you in covenant with me. That's why he said, I kept them in their word. He said, I kept them in the word. I mean, I made love to them with your word. And the said, and they received your word. And that word caused me to produce a behavior that sanctified me, made me different. Because when a woman get pregnant, she become different. You know she pregnant. Why? Because when she become pregnant, the first thing that happens when she become pregnant is her cycle stops. Amen. Letting her know that life has, something has stopped it. The life has stopped. And then her breasts and thing, her hormones, she began to throw. Her body begins to go through changes. God says, when you accept me, that word get inside you. And you begin to go through some changes, y'all. Come on, y'all. Anybody, you begin to, come on, you go through some changes. Where you used to lie and you used to steal. When you used to do sex. You know, but when that word got inside of me and got inside you, you realize how much I love you. And you realize how much I care about you. And you know my thoughts towards you are not evil but to give you hope in a future and when you realize that I gave my only son for you and that seed and you accepted that seed and now inside of you I'm producing the seed I'm releasing inside of you and the seed is falling on good ground and that good ground now is producing fruit I mean now you're beginning to look like you're pregnant your, your, your character is changing your nature is changing what I used to do I don't do no more I'm being sanctified through the word of God and he's producing God in me and guess what I'm not all the way there yet you know what I'm saying I, but I can see myself growing anybody can see yourself growing I can see myself growing because I remember I used to lie all the time but now I got a conscience on lying I used to want to have sex like this but now I got a conscience of righteousness because I've been coming one with him and why does Satan want he says if I can pollute and dilute the image if I can defile the image if I can make it to the place where it's no longer about producing where it's no longer about producing life no more. Where it's just about having pleasure. Because now you can get together with a man and a man. And it's no longer about producing life. It's just about pleasure. It can't produce anything. He said, I want, and Satan said, I want a church like that. And I want people to believe God is like that. I can get with God, but I'm not going to produce nothing. I can stay the same and say I'm God. I can stay the same. I can still lie. I can still cheat. I can still commit fornication and say I'm God because now I don't believe that you have to produce anything. All you have to do is not just have a lot of pleasure. So God, give me a whole lot of pleasure. Give me a new car. Give me a new house. Keep giving my flesh pleasure, God, because I can't produce anything that has true substance to it. I can't produce life. So Satan says I'm going to use and I'm going to paint, I'm going to distort it. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Keep on going. 
For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. The two shall become one flesh. Go ahead. Verse 17. Verse 17. But he go. who is joined to the Lord. Say it again. But he who is joined to the Lord. Say it again. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. One spirit. Just like a person becomes to a person, they become one flesh. He who is joined to the Lord, because, because God is spirit. And he who is joined to God, begin, that's the true evolution. The evolution is not what he was saying. The evolution is not to evolve and become more perverted. The true evolution is to evolve and become more spiritual. Amen? To be able to now walk in the spirit of God. To walk in the fruit of the spirit of God. To walk in kindness. To walk in gentleness. Amen? To walk in truth. Amen? Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against, against his own body. So watch this. Y'all just, you got to get the revelation. Every sin we do is outside the body. If you steal something that's outside the body. Sexual sin is the only sin that you do that can destroy where God want to dwell. That's why he attacked it. That's why Satan set up a whole structure to attack it. Because he know if I can get you to defile the temple of God, God will not dwell in an unclean temple. So Satan has mounted up from the, sex, from the sexual revolution to now where sexual perversion is norm, becoming normal. Why? To defile the temple. Because Satan know that God don't care nothing about a building. Satan, why isn't we? He wise not He know God really want you. He know that Jesus really came to die, not for no house, not for no car, not for all the stuff we want God to give us. He sent his son to die for you. That's how special. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar. The sad part is you don't even know how special you really are. You don't even know how his, all his absolute, even the angels say this. The angels say, who is man that God thinks so highly of him? The angels in heaven wonder, who is man that God thinks so highly of him? That's how, God says, you so precious that he said, if he had a hundred sheep, he'll leave the 99 just to go get one. And yet, the sad part, we got a church that don't even understand how special they are to God unless he giving them something. Unless he giving them some tangible thing that feeds their flesh. But he told the woman at the will, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the true gift of God and who it was that's here, you would ask me for living. Word. You would ask me for the Holy Spirit because he who is one with the spirit is one with God, with the Lord. Amen. Key reading. We almost finished, y'all. Keep reading. We're going all the way to 20. 20. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Or, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Say, what my, who, say it again. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you not know that God wants to dwell inside your body? The Holy Spirit of God dwell inside. That's why he told you and me, be ye holy for I am holy. And Satan said, I'm going to make you defile that temple. I'm going to make you make that temple so unclean that God can't dwell in it. That's how you know anyone that's practicing homosexuality, I don't care if they say, they're not, I don't care if they marry, if they're practicing, God is not in that temple. I don't care if they preach behind a pulpit. I'm, I'm saying this boldly because I know the word of God. You cannot be defiling the temple and think God is in that temple. The Holy Spirit is not going to dwell in an unclean temple, especially a temple that has accepted what God, to, what God has said is unclean to be clean. It don't matter how much good works you do, you can't make the temple clean. No. Only God can make the temple clean. Go ahead. Verse 
whom you have from God, and you are not your own. You're not what? Your own. See, that's, look at somebody say, I'm not my own. You know what? If we really believe that scripture, let me tell you, if the church really believed that scripture that you are not your own, that now you belong to God and the Holy Spirit now dwelling in you, and you're his son and daughter, you would ask God before you let somebody in your life. You know why you would ask God? Because you would check with the landlord. If you no longer belong to your, yourself and you belong to God, you don't trust yourself to let the person in because you're going to be like, God, I don't know if he's the right one. God, is this who you have for me? Why? Because you're the landlord. You own this. You bought this. Not with pre God didn't purchase you with corruptible things. He did not purchase you and I with corruptible things like silver and gold. He purchased you by the blood of Jesus. You were purchased by the, by the death of his son. That blood that was on that cross. And because your father, you know, in some cultures, and this is, this is not a bad thing, so America, America has a problem really understanding this, but in some cultures, the father will pick the bride. The father will pick the husband for his wife. Some people don't understand why would they ever let, want their father to pick. Because when, but when a daughter understands how much her father loves her, she know that, she would that her father would never pick anything that wouldn't love her or was best for her. Because she, she might go into her emotions, but her father would pick that which would be what? A blessing to her. But see, the only reason she would feel comfortable with that if she actually knew how much her father loved her. See, in America, that's hard. Why? Because many fathers are missing in action. I'm talking about even some of the ones in the house. They miss in action. And most young ladies in America, when they have their first rendezvous with a man, they probably don't know nothing about it. Because they're not even close to their father like that. But God says, I'm your father. So why are you acting? Watch this, y'all. Watch it. Ladies and us as men, the bride. God says, I am your father. Why are you, why are you operating and acting independent from me? If I'm love, why don't you consult me first so I can find out if love lived there? Because, come on, let's be honest. With the, with the Carfax, because God said, when I, when, I, when I pull your Carfax, you done wrecked your life a couple of times. Thinking you picked the right one. And blaming him or blaming her when you don't want your, he wasn't nothing but a dog. Well, I guess, rah, rah, Miss Dog, because you chose it. She ain't nothing but a, she, she, she ain't, oh, she ain't, she ain't nothing but a Sean. Well, how you doing, Mr. Sean? You chose it. Well, I couldn't see. For a Christian is, how come you couldn't see? For a child of God, how come you couldn't see? Maybe you're not connected to the one who could see. Or maybe you didn't consult the one because you were so impressed by them hips and lips that you had no idea that there was a demon motivating that. There was a Delilah, Jezebel spirit functioning around that. And them blinking them eyes, all that is a part of that seduction that she learned. To what? To destroy the men of God. And as soon as she gets you, she's going to start acting real funny. Why? Because she broke him. Does this make sense, y'all? God unfolding it. If we can see it, he unfolding it. He's unfolding it. Why? Because he doesn't want his children blind to what he's doing and what's going on now. Go ahead. That was verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. For you were brought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Recognize the one who loved you enough to die for you. And stop. This is for men and women. But don't go giving your seed to some woman who ain't, don't do, who ain't in her kingdom. Because, boy, you'll spend your whole life having your name in another person's house who won't give you no rights. Because she's bitter and angry. But it ain't her fault you should have never dropped the king's seed there in the first place. 
This, I didn't say it. This is what the word of God said. The word of God says, for you are bought with a price. Holy, therefore, glorify God in your body. But you got a generation of women. Man, I saw them. I saw them wearing all pink. Tell my, you ain't going to tell them this is my body. You ain't going to tell me. Well, God says, no, that ain't your body. I created I'm, I'm the one formed that from the dust. And if I snap my fingers, it'll fall to the ground and die. It's my body. But the scripture just said, the scripture says, for you are bought with a price. Holy, therefore, glorif glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your spirit and body belongs to God. But God love, but it belongs to the one who is love. We don't even get like I don't want nobody to control it. He's love. He has no ill intent towards you. His thoughts towards you are the Bible says his thoughts towards you are never evil. He wants to give you hope in the future, but you're too busy trying to do it on your own. And you keep bumping your head and you're so wounded and you keep jumping to one relationship to another and you won't let God heal you. And then you go to some psychology who don't know who God is and they're gonna medicate you to death. They just going to medicate you. They going to numb you out because they ain't got no answers for real. So they just medicate you to the point where you're just so numb and you don't know nothing no more. But I know anybody know a healer? I know, watch this. The Bible says that God is a healer of a broken heart. He can heal your broken heart. Even if it came when you was a little girl because of your disappointment because of your father. God says if your mother and father forsake you, I'll never forsake you. God says, I'll never leave you stranded. Even if people do, I'll wipe away them tears that nobody else see. God says, stop running. Because I see your wounds. I see your nakedness. And guess what? God says, I see your nakedness and my arms are still open. I'm not going to reject you. I won't do you like people do. I won't shun you. And I'm a witness as men, because, you know, we as men, we've been taught, man, hold it in. Don't let nobody know. Man, hold it in. But it's a lot of men broken. They broken. Because let me tell you something, ladies. Men won't love, too. But we just like you. We got to figure out what it is, too. So we go around. Watch. Now, watch. Look at the game Satan played. Let me tell you the game he played. So we go around breaking each other. We just go around breaking each other. And then we break each other with daddy breaking daughters and mama breaking sons. And we just keep breaking each other, break everybody, breaking each other. And then what we do, everybody cover up. Then go pay millions of dollars to sit down with somebody who ain't got no answers but medication and ignore God. And God said, give me your heart. I'm a mender of a broken heart. God says, I will wipe away the tears if you let me. Some people... Man, there, I've seen God heal marriages. I've seen God heal friendships. You probably, I've seen God heal fathers and daughters relationship that was tore up for years. Some of us, you want to hold on to bitterness, but your bitterness is your prison for something. Your bitterness stops you from getting something new. And God says, I'm probably, God says, I want to heal. I want to deliver you. I want, I hear you, Holy Spirit. God says, I want to bring back your joy. I want you, remember when you used to have joy? I want to bring back your real joy. Where you don't need a, where you don't need a drink. They want to, why are you so joyful? Why? Because I've been healed. And y'all know what? Man, it breaks my heart because I see the, I see Satan playing. You saw it. We've we seen it. We saw what he want to do. He want to defile it. Everything, our children, man, he going into the schools, he want to defile everything. Our little babies, man, these 11, 12-year-olds, they being trafficking, trafficked. This, this wickedness didn't come from God, it came from man and his wicked heart who reject God. And God says, I'm waking up some sons and daughters. He said, I'm choosing you. I'm choosing you. I'm choosing. Stop looking for, stop looking for the change. I'm going to make you the change. By what? Because heal people heal people. Just like broken people break people. So I got to heal you first. 
So I got to bring you to myself because you keep bouncing, bouncing to everything. You keep trying to run because you don't, you, you don't want nobody to see that little girl. You don't want nobody to see that little, that little dude. But God says, I see it, and I, and I do not cast you away. I love the fact he said, I do not cast you away. I will not cast you away. I'm your healer. I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna bring this part to an end. It says, For you are bought with a price. Holy, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Romans 1. Now I gotta tie it all together. Romans 1. You know where I'm y'all know some of y'all know where I'm going. Romans 1. This is the end, y'all. I gotta show you, I gotta show you what they were saying is not God. Romans 1. Let's start at the 23rd verse. Romans 1, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. That's what they want to do. They want to change the glory of God to corruptible man. They want to say, this is love. This, this, and I'm going to tell you, y'all, y'all, you gonna, some of y'all gonna come back and y'all gonna call me. You gonna you gonna you gonna see God. I see what you're saying. I promise you, they gonna run off the platform of freedom. They gonna say, "Be free." You know who they really want you to be free from? They want you to be free from God. Their freedom is a deception. Their freedom, the word, the way they use freedom is a deception. But that that's just like Satan to use a word. To be a sheep, to be a wolf, then act like a sheep to trap you. To say freedom, then to persecute you and bring you into bondage. When she married that couple, she had to violate God to do that. Y'all understand? She had to tell God, step off to do that. And that makes it wicked but let's see it let's see the word he says therefore god also gave unto go ahead read one. okay go to keep going made like corruptible men and and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things see when you look to anywhere other than god you make that your god you're making corruptible what does corruptible things mean to make something temporal your god is a God that cannot sustain you. Why? Because it's temporal. Amen? It's corrupt. It's going to corrupt. If you make money your God, it's corruptible. It come and go. It cannot sustain you. If you make your job corruptible, whatever, if you make a man or woman your God, you're in trouble. Why? Because they're corruptible too. They're in a body that's fading away. God is the only one that's eternal. So you want to be connected to that which is eternal when a storm comes. Amen? Not something that's corruptible. Go ahead. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. I want you to underline that word. He gave them up to, uh, when they wouldn't keep God in his position, he, the first thing he gave them up to was uncleanness. What they were promoting is something unclean. Even where you have to have sex is unclean in what they're promoting. Even how they have sex, they have to go to a place it is unclean. And where they go to have sex, it is not only is it unclean, it cannot produce any life. So he said, I'm going, uh, it's not my, so the first word, put it to the side, Join because you're joining your, when you join to what they're talking about, you're joining to something that God calls unclean, uncleanliness. Go ahead. In the lust of their hearts. In the lust of their, because their desires in their heart want something that's unclean. They want something, they want what they want no matter what. That's man on oh man or oh woman on oh man when you don't do it the right way. Go ahead. To dishonor their bodies among themselves. What are they dishonoring? I can't hear you. What are you dishonoring? I can't hear y'all. What are you dishonoring? Where does God want to dwell? So if you accept their truth, then their truth says dishonor your body so God won't dwell here. Go ahead. Who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. 
Who exchanged the truth of God? Who exchanged God's way to accept a way that is a lie? He said, they're changing it. We see, we in 2024, y'all got the same thing that happened in Genesis. They tried to change the truth. It's happening. It is not going to. It is happening now. So you might want to make up what side you're going to be on. Either you're going to be on the side of God or the side of the world. You can't be on both sides. And, the, and when you're on the side of the world, the world is going to tell you, dishonor your body. Make sure, keep it unclean. As long as you feel good, keep it unclean. As long as you, I'm happy. God want to take you past happy. He want to take you to joy. Joy is better than just being happy for a moment. God wants to. That's why I'm so glad that God cleaned my body. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I had this dream. Prof, I was, this is one of those dreams that made a brother happy. I was rejoicing. Because in the dream, God, it was, I, saw, I saw this hand and it had a USB, right? And the USB stuck it in the machine. But I knew in the dream it was about to show me my whole life. Right. He stuck a USB into the computer and all came up was white. He said, I make all things clean. I woke up. I was like, yes. You know what I'm saying? He said, thank God. Come on, somebody. I was like, yeah, because he stuck the USB in. But all I saw was a white screen. I know why his blood made God. Remember, I told you he got God crazy with numbers and colors. With numbers, he take two ones and make a one. And God with colors, he takes something that's dirty, turn it red, then make it white. Amen? Something that was dirty, he turned it red with the blood, and from the blood, he'd make it white. He was showing me, he said, I make all things clean. I was like, thank you. Because the enemy trying to convince you that you, when you accept Christ, you ain't dirty no more. Stop living in mistakes. Stop, stop letting the devil convince you that you're not clean. When you accept Christ, he took on your sins. Stop beating yourself up over something that God has forgiven you for. The Bible says Satan is an accuser of the brother. He always accusing you. Always saying you ain't this. You'll never be that. You'll never. And God says you are the apple of my eye. You are a royal priesthood. God says you are a peculiar person. Amen. God says I chose you and took you out of the. He said I chose. You ain't choose me. I chose you. Amen. Go ahead. And worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. See, Amen. they don't want to worship the one that's blessed forever. They just want to worship. worship. That's why, I, man, let me say this to y'all. Oh, I don't look, whoever in office, I don't care, I ain't to be funny, I don't care who get in office. Why? Whoever in office don't dictate what God, how is a man going to stop what God got for you? I don't care if she get in office, whoever get in office is going to be who God want there. So the question is not who in office, the question is why God put them there. Why did God put Barack in office? Maybe he was trying to show the people what they really wanted. Why did God put Donald Trump in office? Maybe he was trying to reveal to the people, you no, know, look what's going on. See, stop looking at the person. Ask God, God, why did you? Because the Bible says God is the one who sit up and sit down. Because how many of y'all know that it was God who put King Nebuchadnezzar in office? The king that took Jerusalem into bondage? God says, I established that king. Why? He said, I'm going to punish Jerusalem. Since you want a false God, I'm gonna give you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you get him taken bondage for a while. Just like a come on, just like a parent. You want? You, or you want act? Like, you want? You want act quick? Okay, come here. Let me come here. Let me let me help you out a little bit. Cause sometimes we get come. On, sometimes we hard headed. Amen. Y'all, oh y'all, look, y'all looking like y'all ain't hard headed sometimes. Sometimes God might give you what you want, let you have what you want, just to wake your butt up because you keep telling you no, but you keep acting like you don't care. I remember this one. This God kept telling this person. He kept showing the girl the guy was a cheater. He, I mean, she get on the phone, all that, and she still want it. So God, you know, God be like, okay. When you get tired of wanting what you, God still love you, but he can't, God ain't, you, you, you're, you, you hard-headed, you're going to do what you want to do. So sometime I'm going to let you go ahead and get what you want. And when you get, it ain't going to turn out good for you though. But hopefully after you get through getting your behind toe up, you'll come back there and say, I'm sorry, repent. Amen. Some people don't make it back though. Go ahead. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Y'all listen to this. God gave them up to vile. How does that man do that? How could they do that? That looks so nice. Let me tell you what God said. He gave them over to vile. 
affections. Let me tell you what that word vile affection means. It means shamefully, wicked, disgusting passion. He said he gave them up to sh that, that which was shamefully and wicked. And, and he said, that's what the word vile affection is. He said he gave them up to shameful wickedness and disgusting passion. And on the, uh, what's funny about it, when you look at it, it looks so beautiful. When she sat there, the two women, they was like, I do. But God says, that's vile affection. It's shameful wickedness. God says, it's shameful wickedness. Not only shameful, it's shameful wickedness. And then he said, the script, then he says, not only shameful, he says, it's disgusting passion. And God still loved both of them. But it's the truth. You can still love your kid and hate the fact that they're on crack. You can still love your kid and hate the fact that they're in jail. You still love them. Don't mean the fact that they're not going to pay the price for what they're doing. And if they try to say you don't love me because you don't accept the fact that I'm on crack, you sound crazy. You don't love me because you don't accept the fact that I went to No, I don't have to like the fact that you went to jail. I still love you. Don't try to get me to accept the wrong. <clears throat> Go ahead. For even their woman exchange the natural use for what is against nature. The women change the natural use of their body for that which God says is against nature. It is what they're doing. Is God says even nature, even you ain't going to see, even animals know that you got to have a male and a female dog. You're going against nature. God says the woman. So when you see the woman, those two women, they, you, they, 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 what? This, this, what, I'm not telling this. This is, the, this is what the Bible says. So when they talking about the Bible, don't say nothing about it. That's a lie. The Bible says something right there. It's right in Romans eight. The Bible says, for this cause, God gave them up. Answer. For if, um, then he says, and likewise, all. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me go back. He says, and likewise, also the men leaving their natural use of a woman. I'm sorry. Let me go back up. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Women. You sitting there, they, they land with another woman, she got breasts just like you do. She got a vagina just like you do. God says, that ain't even natural. It's nothing natural. God says, ain't, but watch this. But when you create the laws, you will change something. Like, like right now, how many of y'all know this? It's natural for abortion. People don't even think about it. It's like, oh, you had abortion? Oh, that's terrible. Okay, what happened? No problem. But do y'all know years ago, back in the field, there was a time that abortions weren't even legal? And it was a shameful thing to do to have it. It was a shameful. Do y'all know this? It was a shameful thing to have sex when you weren't married. You see how far we have come? Now I'm not talking about, see, because sometimes we go to we go one level. We go, where if somebody has sex. Then you start calling all kind of H's and such. Hey, we shouldn't do that either. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be trying to bring somebody to a place of correction by belittling them, calling them. But you should speak the truth in love. Amen? You know, I'm calling somebody out their names. ain't going to make somebody want to listen to you. Matter of fact, it's going to kindle up more hate. And Jesus don't do that. But he does speak the truth. He will speak the truth. Go ahead. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. Men left the natural use of a woman. God says that's natural. Why? Go back to Genesis. It is natural for a man to be attracted and to go to a woman. He says men are leaving the natural use of a woman. They don't want no woman no more. Matter of fact, not only do they don't want a woman, <laughs> they want to be a woman. They want to put nail polish on their hands. They want to do stuff that's feminine now. They want to be a woman. They want to be, they want to be women. They want to be in, they want to be in, they want to go on, on talent shows with they want to be on uh, Miss America now. Men. They want, they they want to win, they they want to be the woman. That's out of order. That's like children want to be the parents. A child ain't got no business running your house. That's not God's order. But you got children telling their mama and daddy what to do. 
and what they're not going to do. God's like, ah, no, that's not really good. That's not how I designed that. The Bible says, told children, honor your mother and father that your days may be long upon the earth. He told children to honor their parents, not disrespect their parents. That's God's way of doing it. He tells a wife to submit to her husband. He tells a husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church that he gave his life. He tells a husband, sacrifice your life for your wife. No, God, I ain't with all that. I'm not with all that, God. I like, I was good. I was good until you said sacrifice. And he's not talking about, he's not talking about, he means sacrifice, but he means that in a way of be willing to stand on God's word no matter what. Sacrifice means the first Adam died with his bride. Amen? She did dirty. He did dirty right along with her. He died with the second Adam, Jesus died for his bride. In other words, he didn't do dirty. He stuck, he did what God wanted him to do to save his bride. The first Adam didn't do what God wanted, he did what she wanted him to do. The first, the second Adam did what God wanted him to do, and that saved his bride. Go ahead. Burn in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And they always tell you, it ain't nothing in the Bible to speak against it. It's right there in Romans. It says, Romans 27 says, And likewise, also men leaving the natural use of a woman, burning in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. The word unseemly definition means unseemly. Unseemly means behaving or actions of are not proper appropriate to receive in themselves a recompense of their error which was meant read 28 and even as they did not like to retain retain God in their knowledge okay this is the problem y'all this is where all of it came this is where where we saw Barack he this verse explains what happened then and what's happening now this, this, this explains what Barack was saying. This is what's happening to America, what's happening to New England, or to Germany. This is what's happening to the world. Read 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They did not want to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to. They didn't, it was no longer, does this please God? Do what I say. When I make my laws, do they please God? When I choose my husband, does it please God? When I choose my wife, does it please God? I don't care about pleasing Abba. I just want to do what I want. Go ahead. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. In other words, we see a nation doing things that are not fitting to God because their desire for wickedness was so great that God gave them over to it. That's what he used Barack Obama. That's what he used Barack Obama to do, to show America, I'm gonna give you over to what you want. But do not, wait a minute, but do not get discouraged, because when God begins to move like that, He also begins to raise up a remnant. He begins to raise up some sons and daughters who will be a place of truth, that those who desire to hear truth will come out of her, will come out of this world system, and God is going to judge this world. This is what God wanted me to talk about tonight. I just want to say this. We have to pray. Amen. If God brought you here tonight, he wanted you to see this. He wants you to understand what's going on. Because some of us come here to be wondering about what's my purpose, God. I feel sometimes I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. What, what God, what do you have for me? What is life? And God said, I brought you here tonight because I want you to see what I have for you. I want you to see to, I want you to wake up and know that I love you. I want you to understand that I called and designed you for purpose because you've been feeling lost for a while. And I wanted to tell you that I'm the one knock. I'm the one been knocking on your door late at night. I'm the one that calls you not to sleep. I'm the one that's been trying to get you to notice that I'm, I'm present. So if you have never accepted God as your Lord and Savior, then we can do that tonight. If you know you need to repent, then let's do that tonight. 
if you know, man, God, I, you woke me up, then wake up and ask God to come into your heart and ask God to keep your eyes open that you may see. Because he says, just like he said, a man is one, they become one flesh. Accept Christ so you can become one spirit with him. And people are like, well, I went to church. A lot of people go into church and they got the spirit of God. There's a lot of people, they do a whole, there are people who will do a, they do a whole lot of work for their church, but don't do nothing for God. They sold out to their church. They're just not sold out to God. And the evidence of it is, is how they act when they're not in church. So I pray if you know, whatever, wherever you at, may you be on Zoom. Amen. I thank God for you all on Zoom. May you be on Facebook or wherever we at. This is God knocking, and God, I'm telling y'all, please hear what I'm saying to you. This is happening. This stuff is happening. It's in action, and America has told God, step off. And God, and God is weeping, but God said, I'm going to show you because I'm, I'm trying to pull you out of her. Why? Because I need to move through your life to pull other people out of her. There are people that you can tell, what's your, what's your name, my brother? What's your name? Huh? Joffrey. There are people you can touch I'll never be able to touch. The people you're going to talk to I'll never be able to talk to. You, touch, you got a whole arena of people that deal in your life that I, I will never meet. And God says, I need to raise you up. I need to strengthen you. Why? Because some of the people that's, that's in your life, if, God, if they don't see your light, they ain't going to see nobody light. And God be like, no more compromise. No more saying, God, I know you with my mouth, with my life, and my actions don't look like you. But God, I can't do it without you because the Bible says unless the branch is connected to the vine, it cannot bear any fruit. And God, I need you to help me. So let us all stand up for a moment. We're going to pray. And if you're on Zoom, if you're on Zoom, what's your name? No, all we got to do, he said he knocked, right, Prof? Ask him to come into your heart. Ask God to have his way in your life because I'm going to tell you something. On Zoom, in his classroom, on Facebook, don't let the devil fool you. God, God designed you for purpose. He designed you. For, and Satan trying to shoot his best shot to get you entangled and caught up in these things in the world. And God don't mind adding things to your life. He wants to add things to your life. But God, it's like this. God don't add boyfriends. He add husbands. God don't play because he loves you. Let me tell you something. I told men this. God ain't going to never let you play with something he was willing to die for. He ain't going to let you play with something, male or female, that he was willing to die for. God said, Hi, what make you think I'm going to make you see if you want this or don't want this? If you're going to play with this, no, no. Come to me and I'll show you because I'm not going to have, because you ain't got to have sex with somebody to hurt them. You ain't got to have sex with somebody to break them. You can emotionally shipwreck somebody and destroy them. So, Father God, let us bow our head. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, oh, gracious and glorious God. We thank you for the sweetness of your presence, God. God, we need you. We need your gracious and glorious God. We thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary. We thank you for your son. We thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you for delivering us from evil. We thank you for sanctifying us. For we, were in, we are in this world, but we are no longer of this world. And God, we thank you that you are healing the hearts of those in this room. You are breaking through, God. I see it in the spirit. You are breaking through the hearts in this room. Because you, have, you desire them for purpose. Because you love them. We simply say to Satan, to every unclean spirit, to every familiar spirit, to every, uh, to every demon, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. We command it in Jesus' name to loosen every vessel. God, cause eyes to be open to see. Father, we ask you in Jesus' name, cause ears to be unplugged that they may hear you speak. Call heart, cause hearts to to be unhardened that they may receive your word with joy. God, we pray that you will begin to heal relationships with mothers and daughters and sisters and brothers, husbands and wives, that you begin to heal the broken places, God, like only you can. 
God, you are our deliverer. You are he who delivers, O oh, gracious and glorious God. Let us not be as those who cast off restraints, God. God, we thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.